ok. So, we will go to the second scenario today, time starts now. You have a 80 year old man presenting with a high PSA of 28 and uh, is attending the clinic, he has significant symptoms of uh, not able to empty the bladder comfortably, weak stream and also urgency associated with nocturnal frequency. How are you going to evaluate him? So, I will see this patient as a matter of urgency since his PSA is high. I will, I will see him accompanied by the um, oncology specialist nurse. I will <coughs> take a history, focus examination, the presence of chaperone with the patient concerned, uh, and arrange some investigation. I'll ask about his uh, avoiding symptoms, or whether it's mainly predominant storage or avoiding, um, about um, uh, associated incontinence with that, any use of uh, pads, about the uh, frequency and severity of the bed uh, wetting, um, any red flag symptoms like hematuria, weight loss, bone pain, neurological symptoms, um, any constipation. Uh, I will ask also about his uh, medical. Um, uh, medical history, any uh, comorbidities, the use of uh, any medication, uh, including phytotherapy. I will ask about any previous surgery or radiotherapy, uh, uh, about his social life, whether he's independent or living with someone else. And uh, I will uh, do a focused uh, examination in the presence of chaperone with the patient consent, uh, examine um, mainly looking for any uh, um, I will examine the patient uh, generally looking for any uh, wasting uh, cachexia. I will look also for any uh, palpable uh, bladder. I will examine the genitalia and then examine the rectal examination. Uh, and uh, I will assess uh, him neurologically if there are suggestive symptoms. I will do urine dip stick. Um, uh, I will arrange for the patient. I will ask the patient to fill the IPSS uh, form and uh, three day bladder diary. And I will do fluoride uh, bladder scan. And I will counsel him uh, about uh, the significance of his uh, IPSA. Okay. Uh, his examination shows a possible nodule on the right side of the prostate with clinical stage T to A. His urophrometry showed obstructive pattern with maximum flow of only 8 ml per second. He voided 300 ml with uh, 200 ml residue. What further things you want to do? So, for um, I will divide into management of his PSA and the management of his uh, LUTs. For the uh, PSA, uh, I will check his uh, overall uh, fitness and other comorbidities. And if the patient is uh, uh, fit with no major comorbidities, then I will arrange uh, for him uh, to have a, a bone scan and MRI scan and take it further from there. For the lower urine tract symptoms, uh, he is, uh, uh, sorry, what, what was his IPSS? His IPSS is 30 out of 35, QOL 5 out of 6. So this patient is having a quite significant lower urine tract symptoms with a quite uh, low uh, flow rate and significant post void uh, residue. So uh, I will start by giving him lifestyle advice uh, and then I will um, advise him to start uh, uh, Tamsulucin uh, 400 microgram uh, once daily and I will explain to the patient uh, the mechanism of action and the possible side effect. Okay. Um, you are starting him on Tamsulosin and uh, so regarding the PSA, you have arranged bone scan and MRI scan. Bone scan was normal, MRI scan showed pyrad 3 lesions in the right lobe, otherwise transition zone and left lobes were normal. Yeah, so I explained to the patient that uh, pyrad 3 is in the gray uh, area and uh, in my practice here, we offer the patient uh, prostate biopsy for uh, pyrid 3 even if there is no um, obvious uh, targetable lesion, we will do a systemic TP biopsies. Okay, you are doing the biopsy which showed uh, right side uh, 4 out of 6 scores positive with Gleason score 4 plus 3 and on the left side none of the cores were positive. Okay, so this patient uh, I will discuss uh, the histology um, and his uh, MRI and bonus scan in our MDT meeting and most likely 
this patient is having an intermediate risk uh, prostate cancer, sorry, that's a high risk of prostate cancer since his PSA is more than uh, a 20 with a Gleason 3 plus 4, 7. So um, uh, this patient uh, uh, will be offered uh, a treatment and I think uh, this treatment will be to give him um, a new adjuvant hormonal therapy and then radical radiotherapy. Is there any role for CT scan? Um, no, not, not, not routinely we perform the CT scan. It's mainly the concern of the oncologist about the extent of the lymph nodes. So if the initial MRI showed you no know, significant pelvic lymph node, then unlikely that there will be a, an a extra pelvic lymph node. Um, so if the oncologist is happy with the uh, uh, finding from the MRI and the bone scan, we don't arrange a, a CT scan uh, regularly. Okay. Let us assume this patient has no metastasis, organ confined, Gleason 4 plus 3 prostate cancer, and um, you are giving him the options. You said radical prostatectomy. Any other options possible for him? Um, so, sorry, radical, radical radiotherapy. I said uh, not a prostatectomy. Okay. Why you are selecting radical radiotherapy? Why not prostatectomy? Uh, usually, we, we don't offer radical prostatectomy for a patient uh, after the age of 75 in, in my practice because of the associated uh, uh, risk of anesthesia and, and surgery. Okay. You are advising radical radiotherapy. Patient is seen by your radiation oncologist and uh, they are discussing the pros and cons. They are a bit worried with patient's uh, LUTS and it's not responded well to tamsulosin. What will you do? So for this patient, um, I need to control his lower urinary tract symptoms before he starts the radiotherapy, <coughs> which usually happen in three months following starting the hormones. The hormonal treatment may help to uh, shrink the size of the prostate and improve his symptoms as well. But if the patient uh, was trying uh, Tamsulucin for a few weeks and there is no significant improvement in his symptoms, uh, then I will discuss the patient the need to have a, a channeling TRP. Uh, prior to his radiotherapy. So, in which way channel TURP is different from normal TURP? Uh, in channeling TURP, we are um, aiming just to create a, a good channel in the prostate uh, uh, fossa rather than uh, removing significant amount or rather than resecting the whole anatomical peripheral zone. Um, because with the, uh, with the use of hormonal treatment, um, this will help to improve the patient's symptoms on the long term. So we are just want to ensure that there is a good cavity in the prostatic fossa so the patient will not went into retention uh, following the radiotherapy. If this patient wishes to have brachytherapy, how will you plan? So uh, this patient, I don't think he is a good candidate for radiotherapy because he is a high risk of prostate cancer and usually we offer it for the low risk and low volume intermediate risk uh, so i don't he will be the, a good candidate and usually we offer it for a small size of prostate less than 50 gram and patient without significant lots so for all this reason i will not consider bracket therapy for this patient okay so you are doing channel trp and the histology shows um, all our bph tissue what does this mean uh, this is not unexpected because mainly we are resecting the transition zone while most of the prostate cancer is in the peripheral zone. Uh, so it will not change uh, my plan of management. Okay. After starting androgen deprivation treatment, uh, how many weeks or months you need to wait before going for radiotherapy? Uh, usually it's around three months and then the radiotherapy should happen. And since the patient is uh, having a high risk uh, prostate cancer, uh, so I will continue uh, the hormonal treatment for three years. Okay, what medications you're going to start? I will start with the patient by giving bicalutamide, uh, 50 milligram uh, once daily uh, for uh, 28 days. And after 10 days from starting the bicalutamide, uh, I will arrange for the first LHRH uh, uh, agonist injection. So what is your choice? Uh, my, choice, uh, my choice is to give uh, uh, Azuradix 10.8 um, milligram three months. Okay. What precautions you need to take when you're doing channel TERP? 
Um, to be careful uh, not to resect uh, much of tissue uh, close to the sphincter uh, because the sphincter may become weaker with, <coughs> with the radiotherapy and this may increase the chance of uh, incontinence later on. Okay, that time's up now. Good. Nice presentation. Um, I know we have discussed uh, various BPH scenarios before. That's why I try to give you a little bit of a, a different scenario, which also involves uh, components of BPH treatment with prostate cancer, and you handled it well. Um, just only few advices here and there. Um, you said I will examine the patient for wasting. Uh, wasting means wasting of the muscles. So if you are examining the patient, you will be saying I will be examining the patient for emaciation, which is like a generalized weakness, generalized loss of weight, etc. Uh, if you are saying wasting, you should uh, substantiate it with seeing for wasting of muscles because none of the things we use the word wasting. Yeah. And uh, I agree with your investigations, but if you see the nice kind lines, there is a role for CT, abdomen and pelvis and bone scan for patients with uh, high risk prostate cancer. I agree if the MRI is nicely reported by a radiologist interested in urology and there is no lymph nodes present in the MRI, the chances of skip lymph nodes in the rest of the abdominal cavity is rare. But as per the guidelines, high risk prostate cancer, CT, abdomen and pelvis and bone scans or the staging investigations. I'm happy for you to refer and come back to me. We can discuss this even later. Yeah. Regarding the choice or omission of radical prostatectomy for patient aged 75, um, I don't ask, accept with your view. There are some very good uh, articles on radical prostatectomy in octogenarians and also radical cystectomy in octogenarians. So radical prostatectomy especially is uh, published in our uh, uh, Journal of Clinical Urology and uh, uh, it is a well established surgery and uh, even the, the Journal of Urology also has publications of role of radical prostatectomy in octogenarians. So if the patient is fit, there is definitely a role for radical prostatectomy. I understand your concerns of not giving them the option because of your institution or specific surgeon related choice. That's different, but when you are presenting in the exam, you will be more guided by the guidelines rather than the individual experts' uh, opinions. And um, happy for you to start Tamsulosin. It's a good medicine. Sometimes that may improve the Euroflow and you may not have to do the channeling TURP. The other thing which you can bring in is you are waiting at least three months after starting androgen deprivation treatment. That also can shrink the prostate and improve the urine flow. So you can wait for some time rather than rushing to channel TURP. Any surgery avoided is good in preventing unnecessary side effects. Okay? Yeah. Good. One question if I can ask. Uh, usually, how long after the TURP we should do the radiotherapy? Because I know that we need to leave at least three months following TRP to start radiotherapy. Yeah, it's, that... yeah it's mainly because um, radiotherapy can cause uh, kind of a temporary edema and damage to the sphincter. That's why sometimes patients develop incontinence and then slowly they will develop, they will improve. And uh, again, pelvic floor exercise is very good. TRP can also cause the same problem of uh, temporary post TURP incontinence. So we don't want two, three things acting together, creating a temporary symptom into a long term or a bo quite bothersome symptom. So I will say three months is a good thing. Even brachytherapy is possible if the patient is otherwise fit, like as you said, low or intimidate risk prostate cancer and prostate size less than 50 cc. It is very important that we need to wait before the TURP related edema and inflammation is nicely settled down. So the ideal method is start tamsulosin immediately once the patient is symptomatic, even before you do any prostate biopsy, because prostate biopsy and those kind of clinical um, attendance can cause a patient to tilt towards a urinary retention. So tamsulosin can prevent urinary retention when the patient is having prostate biopsy and other investigations. And uh, once the diagnosis is established, antigen deprivation treatment will improve the patient status further. 
Urophometry will tell you the improvement after tamsulosin and antigen deprivation treatment. If there is not much improvement, if the patient is happy for only radiotherapy, go ahead with uh, channel TURP as soon as possible so that as you said, maybe three months is a good time to wait before radical radiotherapy. But given the choice to me, I will also keep radical prostatectomy as one of the options that will cure both the op LUTS and prostate cancer in one shot. There is no need for transurethral resection prostate surgery, there is no need for tamsulosin for long term and that may sometime give the patient a very good recovery. Yeah, excellent. Thank you very much.